Hi, welcome back to Gapster channel. This video is not about me. It's, it's about one of my subscribers, Fadel, who built this amazing DAC based on my Gapster TD1 DAC and a lot of Ian Canada's parts. <music> So here you can see that Fadel started with an Ian Canada streamer based on the Pure Pie. I always recommend to start this way. The Pure Pie is basically your power supply, and that's what you see down on the bottom. It has a 5 volt and a 3.3 volt, based on in part some uh, super capacitors and also a couple of batteries. So basically, you're getting a good of both worlds there and uh, it's basically getting the 5 volt and the 3.3 volt taken care of. On top of that there is usually a Raspberry Pi or you might want to use for example a DDC board and use your own streamer and on top of that goes the 54Q7 and this is what reclocks the system and this is where you can use some really good clocks. Ian has some really nice clocks and these are really top-notch clocks. On top of that there is a board that we call a PCM board. Basically it splits the I2S signal into a left channel and right channel and after that goes the Gapster TD1 DAC, that's the one that you see on the very top in here. When you combine all these pieces together, you're going to get yourself a really, really nice uh, DAC, something that you probably haven't heard before. And this is when most people will fall in love with the sound. And from there on, they start to want to say, well, well, maybe I can do this or maybe I can do that. And uh, this is where sometimes you'll see other people starting to add more and more power supplies and making it more and more elaborate. And here is what you see in the next shot here, where actually Fadel added quite a few linear uh, pies. A linear pie is basically, it's a little power supply by in Canada, and uh, I'll put links of all these in the description below. And it's a really good one, it goes down to below the one microvolt ripple, and it can actually do five amps. So this is really good. Uh, so not mo most power supplies cannot do that much amperage and still stay below the one microvolt uh, ripple, and that's pretty remarkable. Uh, on top of that, uh, Fadel added some uh, UC conditioners, and this is a two big capacitors that you see here, and he's got a lot of those. So on each basically linear pi, he's got the UC conditioner, and uh, that's basically adding two super capacitors on top of that. And what's that gonna do? It's gonna drop your uh, internal resistance, what we call ESR, and make the power supply even better. So here you can see uh, the DAC that he built. You can definitely tell right away that it is this is not a simple DAC and he was very happy with it. It's basically based on the TDA15418 chip. If you don't know much about this chip, this is a vintage chip from basically the mid 80s to early 90s and uh, it's it's to this day those chips are regarded like gold. They're hard to find and they have such a beautiful sound that we kind of lost and I wish we could get more of those chips. Things technology has changed since the old days, but now we have some really great uh, parts thanks to Ian Canada. And combining the two together, uh, I was able to basically design a DAC that can actually sound uh, really incredible. As you can see from this shot, there's a couple layers. You can see the transformers in the bottom, and then you've got all the uh, power supplies above. Because you need a 15 volt for my Gapster T1 DAC. He has a big Maxwell ultra capacitor, and that's also fed by a UC Pure. Ian Cannon makes also something called UC Pure, is where you can actually charge a big capacitor like that and then disconnect from it. And now your supply is running purely on that ultra capacitor, which is a great and pure way to power something that doesn't require a huge consumption. We've talked about all these, but if you're interested in any of these parts, like I said, I'll put a link in the description uh, below. And uh, for my Gapster TD1 DAC, you could see it that's basically here on top and where you get the TDA chip. 
uh, which is a vintage ship we just talked about. Um, and this is basically, I've worked hard on designing this board. It's a four layer design, very tight. Uh, it uses a lot of copper, a lot of gold in those. Uh, the grounding is all being carefully designed. And the, uh, the output stage is based on a single stage of OPA 861. There's no capacitors. It's a marvelous uh, synergy between it and the TDA chip. Makes quite, uh, especially when it's designed right, it can make an incredible output stage. Uh, for those of you who want to change that to a tube stage, I uh, made a video just on that. Uh, so maybe I'll put a link of it in the corner here, so you might want to watch that. Uh, but again, so here you can see, and then he's got the output. Basically, this is a single-ended uh, design. You can make the gap 30 d one DAC in a balanced version as well. Uh, the difference between the two is not huge. Some people have seen some improvements with the balanced design, some people haven't. It's very dependent on having identical chips and stuff like that, and having, of course, good power supplies. And uh, so you can do it either way, and they both sound great. So uh, Fidel decided later on, initially he didn't have separate output power supplies for the output stage, because you have the left channel and the right channel. And uh, on my Gapster TD1 DAC, you can actually uh, take a couple jumpers off and now you have two separate like mono basically uh, designed for the left and the right and you can supply them separate powers and that gives you a little bit slightly more separation a lot of people have had quite a good success when they actually added a couple more power supplies uh, to, to do that you need two plus and minus five volt to do that so basically two linear pies on one side, two linear pie on the other side, or you could use any other uh, form of power supply, of course. Uh, so it does take a quite a bit more power supply, but at the end you get rewarded with the sound. So for some of you that never looked at all this, you say, oh, you don't need all this, uh, all this stuff. You just need, you know, one little thing. Yes, you can do it with one uh, couple of little power supplies, but the sound will be for that last 5% or 10% of improvement, this is what you need to have more and more power supplies independently running different things. To have pure separation between left and right channel, to have this more, uh, that holographicness and the sound stage starts to come a little bit more, uh, more detailed. And for those of you who don't want to go that far, you're not missing out on a lot. It's like a very small increment of improvement. So even if you design it in a small form like Farrell did at the very beginning, you're going to be rewarded with some incredible sound. And a lot of you, that's all they've done and they're very, very happy with it. So what does Fadl think about the sound? He was very happy when he first built the initial stage, which is a vertical stack. And then he decided he liked it so much, so he started uh, adding more stuff to it. And uh, he sent me this email one time and he said, I can't believe what I'm hearing after powering the output stage separately. It is something else now and magic over magic. Thank you for the wonderful DAC. Cheers, follow. Here's another one of the email where he said, Hi Gabby, here's a further update of the power supply using four double transformers to supply the linear boards with proper isolation. The sound is simply amazing. Greetings from Germany. Here's one of the later letters he sent me. Here's my final version of the Gapster TD1 with the Incana streamer. Sounds wonderful. He lists all what he's using. He said he's comparing it to his setup one. I guess he's using a Gustard uh, R26 DAC and other things. And they said with the Gapster TD1 and Ian Kanda streamer in the second set, I've got a new winner. Thanks to you and Ian Kanda's genius work. It would be a great pleasure for me if you feature my work. Cheers, Fadel. So this is what Fadel basically thinks about the sound. Obviously, he's pretty, uh, he wouldn't have built such an elaborate and spent a fortune with all these uh, parts to get to that stage if he didn't like what he hears. Um, I have a Patreon channel, for those of you who don't know, where we actually 
did have a great group discussion where all of us who have been building uh, uh, different things are sharing our uh, knowledge and information. You can basically join us. There's a lot of things we talk about there we do not talk about on the regular YouTube channel. Uh, for just one dollar you basically have access to all the forum that, that you can see all the chats that's going on, a lot of great builds and great pictures. For the three dollar tier you basically get to see some of the videos where I go in in depth taking things apart, show you where things are, showing you where uh, how to extract I2S signals from different DACs and stuff like that. There's a lot of uh, wealth of information in there that uh, might help and will also support me and support the channel so we can actually do more of that. Uh, I'll put a link of my Patreon channel in the description below. It might be the, the smallest investment it was the biggest bang that you'll ever do. Uh, there will be a speaker in the middle if you'd like to subscribe to the channel. It's another way of supporting the channel. I'm going to put a couple uh, videos in the links in the corners here where we, you can actually uh, see something more about the Gapster TD1 DAC and other builds as well. Take care and I hope to see you on another video.